Our first lesson is taken from Daniel chapter 12, and this will serve as the basis for the sermon this morning. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will rise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. Those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Rock grated against rock as the soldiers rolled the stones the stone over the mouth of the den. Soon, the only white light was a single beam slipping through a crack in the stone. The air was still, warm, and stale like a rotting carcass. And from out of the dark came a low growl. Daniel prayed and waited. At first light, the king rushed to the lion's den. Daniel, has your God been able to save you from the lions? And Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God has shut, sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions because I was found innocent in his fight. And at this, the king was overjoyed. He ordered Daniel to be lifted from the lion's den. And the men who had falsely accused him, he ordered to be thrown instead. Before they even hit the floor, the lions overpowered them. That's justice. The, the innocent man being saved and the guilty getting what they deserve. That's, that's the way it should be, right? Justice is written on all of our hearts. The good people get good things and bad people deserve bad things. When, when everything is right, the good guys win and the bad guys lose and, and everything feels the way it should be. But that's not the way the world works, is it? I mean, sometimes it is. Like when, when God intervenes with divine justice and he, he saves his servants like Daniel from the lion's den or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace. But under normal circumstances... Sometimes the jerk gets away with being a jerk. Sometimes they don't catch the murderer. Sometimes the man who scams the elderly out of their retirement money goes on to live a long, happy life. The world is a mess. We talked about that last week. It's filled with wars and rumors of wars. Violence on TV, violence in the streets, and indifference to marriage and, and human life. And God tells us, Jesus tells us to stand firm on his word through the trouble, through the sufferings. But is, is that it? I mean, is no one going to do something about the evil people? What, that the bad guys just win? Is there no justice for God's people? No, there is not. And here's why that's a really good thing. Judgment is coming. If we think this world is a mess, it was worse for Daniel. Daniel, as a young man, was ripped out of his homeland when Babylonian invaders came and carried him off into captivity and then destroyed the city of Jerusalem. And, and yeah, okay, there was that one time when God saved Daniel miraculously from the lions, but honestly, how many of us have found ourselves in a position where we needed to be saved from lions in the first place? Well, now at the end of his life, and at the end of the book of Daniel, God pulls back the curtain for his servant. He reveals to him what's coming for God's people. Judgment is coming. But before it comes, it's going to be bad. If we think the world is a mess now, and if Daniel thought the world was a mess in his days, it's going to get worse. It's going to be so bad that God is going to put his top angel on the job, Michael. We don't know much about Michael. 
he's the only archangel the Bible tells us about. And we know that when, when God wants to send a message or explain something, he sends an angel like Gabriel. But when it's time to fight, God sends Michael. It's going to be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations. So, I mean, what's the worst historical event you can think of? The, the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, that's up there. The Holocaust, the Rwandan genocide, the reign of brutality of the Khmer Rouge under Pol Pot. All of these things are they are nothing compared to what's coming. Jesus says that if, if that time that's coming is not cut short, no one would survive it. And he actually wonders out loud if there's going to be anyone with faith left on the earth when he returns. And then judgment will come. And no one's going to escape it. Even those who died before the end of the world, they are going to rise. They will awaken. Some to everlasting life. Others to shame and everlasting contempt. God will destroy everything evil. Fantastic, right? Finally, the bad guys, they're, they're going to get what's coming. The evil people, they're going to get what they deserve. The, the good guys are going to win and everything is going to be right with the world. Until we realize that by our behavior, we're one of the bad guys. That, that my wickedness is going to get what it deserves too. Anything that falls short of God's standard will be destroyed. Anyone who falls short of God's standard will awaken to everlasting shame and contempt. And our consciences, they, they speak pretty clearly to us every day that we have fallen short of God's standard. We love it when the, the greedy and selfish get what they deserve. It doesn't stop us from being greedy and selfish. We, we love it when the violent get what's coming to them. It doesn't stop us from holding anger and hatred in our hearts. We are quick to judge the shortcomings of others and even quicker to excuse our own errors. God is not going to make excuses for sin on Judgment Day. Justice for God's people would mean God raining down His fiery wrath on us and our enemies without distinction. That would be everyone getting what they deserve. There's an old story about some firefighters who were walking through the, the charred remains of a forest fire. And, and one of the firemen, he, he spotted kind of off to the side this smoldering, the smoldering remains of a, of a rather large bird. And, and it caught his attention because what was wrong with this bird that it didn't just fly away from the fire? So curious, he, he went over and he, he gently kind of nudged it off the trail with his boot. And he almost fell over himself backwards when three tiny chicks came running out from underneath their mother's wing. The bird could have flown away from the fire. But it chose to remain behind with her children. And it gathered those chicks under its wings and it shielded them from the flames with its own body. The mother didn't make it, but those chicks survived. Jesus gathered us together like a mother hen gathers her, her chicks under her wings. And when God's fiery wrath rained down on sin, Jesus protected us with his own body. Judgment for every sin has already been made. The full punishment of sin has already happened. All God's wrath and the destruction that everyone deserved was poured out on Christ on the cross. He took what was ours and gave us what was His. He took our sins and the, the judgment they deserve and He gave us forgiveness. He took death for all people and offers life in return. Jesus brings deliverance and gives eternal life to anyone who is found written in the book of life. So, so what is that? Kind of this exclusive list? How do, you, how do you get on the list so that the bouncers of heaven don't send you away? How do you get your name written in the book of life? Despite our wickedness, 
despite the judgment you deserve, apart from any good works, God wrote your name in the book. It's an undeserved miracle. That's an undeserved miracle that you got to witness today. This morning, Isabel was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The, through water and the Word, the triune God placed His name on her. The Holy Spirit gave her a new heart of faith and washed away all the wickedness from her. God wrote her name in the book of life. And so on that great and terrible day of when judgment comes, Isabel will be delivered. And so will you and I and everyone who has been baptized into Christ and believes. So you see, there is no justice for God's people. On that last day, every person, believer or not, will rise. Every sinner, every person will receive judgment for their sins. But for those who have been baptized into Christ and trust in Him as their Savior, that justice, that punishment was dispensed on the cross. For those who don't want anything to do with Christ, who don't want anything to do with the cross, they'll get what they deserve on Judgment Day. It's not fair. We, we don't receive what we deserve. We don't receive justice. We receive grace. We receive undeserved love. We deserve, we, we deserve every bit of hellfire as, as anyone else, but instead we will receive heaven. There is no justice for God's people. And that is something to rejoice about. Through Daniel, God gives us a, a little glimpse of what heaven is going to be like. Those who are wise, that is, those who have been brought to faith by the Holy Spirit, those who have come to know Christ in the Word and trust in Him for salvation, they will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness, those who have been spared from God's wrath by Jesus' blood and who have clothed themselves with Jesus' righteousness, they will share what they know with their children and bring them to be baptized. They will share what they have in Christ with their friends and their neighbors. They will instruct others in the truth. And in doing so, they will lead others to righteousness in Christ. They will shine like the stars forever and ever. The first time Jesus came was to take the punishment the world deserved. And the second time he comes will be to bring destruction and deliverance. On that day, the enemies of Christ will get that what they deserve and we will get what Christ deserved. But what about, what about that time between now and then? Is there any justice for God's people? Still no. And it's, it's still a good thing. It's hard to see how this could possibly be a good thing in the midst of this crazy, messed up world. And especially when you are going through trouble and suffering personally, it, it's even harder to see. But keep in mind that even as God allows the wickedness and injustice to go on, He hasn't left us alone. Yeah, sometimes he, he intervenes miraculously with divine justice like He did with Daniel and the lions, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with the fiery furnace, but more often, God is content to work behind the scenes. He sends his angels to guard us and to protect us. When, as the trouble gets worse, God will ramp up the protection, and at the height of the, the persecution of God's people, the archangel Michael will be sent to deliver us, to protect us. We don't know much about the angels. We know they're powerful. We know they're, they're sent to protect us. We know they're something that, that God gives us to, to comfort us. But we might spend our whole lives without ever seeing divine justice. We, might, we probably will instead see people taking advantage of us and, and mocking us, trampling all over us, and you probably won't even see them get what they deserve for it. But God lets them go on so that we can show them the same undeserved love we were shown. There are probably people out there who you feel don't deserve to be in the book of life. 
uh, you probably some people out there you feel deserve everything that they have coming. But remember, you don't deserve to have your name written in the book of life. Now, what we deserve is everything, all the suffering that Jesus received. Instead, we received grace. And so we can use this time now, from, from now until the judgment of the world, to lead many others to the same righteousness we have in Christ. So is there justice for God's people? No. Instead, there is grace. Because we have our names written in the book of life, we can look forward to that last day. It will be the end of, of, of destruction of everything evil. We can look forward to it with joy. The enemies of God will get what they deserve. But you and I, we will receive grace. We won't receive justice because our justice was served in Christ. Everything in this messed up world will be set right. And you and I will shine like the brightness of the heavens in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.